I just wish Elmer Ball was here to give that update. I have a short uh, um, message here from Steve Siegel. At the March meeting, he provided quite the update on, and nothing really changed since then. Well, I'll go ahead and read his little statement here just to get you up to speed. In case as discussed at the last commission meeting, the BLM's cut funding in a wild horse and burrow program in response to sequestration. The result is that only emergency gathers will be conducted in Nevada. Those emergencies will be triggered by lack of forage, low body condition scores on wild horses, and overall poor horse condition. Gathers will not be conducted in response to degraded range conditions alone. It is anticipated that, similar to last year, the BLM may need to conduct emergency water hauling. In addition to the elimination of plant gathers, census work to determine herd size, horse concentrations and general wild horse use will only be conducted in support of environmental assessments being prepared for NEPA compliance. So that latter part is really the concern. Make that. Uh, what is the status of the, uh, the Association of Counties? Uh, uh, you know, um, we, we tried to make contact with them, and, and uh, the last information we had from them was that they really hadn't made any progress. So we'll, I'll follow up on that issue, and, and we'll provide an update. But we did not get any additional information. Some questions were asked. Uh, there was a speaker that came in to, to discuss uh, what constituted best available science and kind of evaluate the process. And he was asked a direct question if he thought the process could be improved. And he thought that uh, there should be some kind of a scientific advisory panel involved. And so currently there's discussion um, on the creation of a scientific advisory panel that, that would include Department of Wildlife, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, USGS. They could then act to, I guess, um, help prevent reinventing the wheel instead of having the technical team, which may not have the expertise of, of the Department of Wildlife, Fish and Wildlife Service, USGS, trying to go out and, and relearn everything that these other agencies already know and have quick access to. They would use the scientific advisory panel um, as exactly that, a scientific advisory body that would provide um, insight, scientific literature relative to sage grouse and sage brush conservation. So um, that's, that's currently being discussed. Um, um, as far as the actual workings of the technical team, the responsibilities of the technical team and the council, a lot of that's still evolving. Um, but Vice Chairman Drew has, has attended more of those meetings than I have, and I'm sure he can probably speak to that with a little bit more insight. Our last Sagebrush Ecosystem Council 
meeting was held on April 22nd in Carson City. I think it was the third uh, meeting that we've had uh, since it's been reformed after the advisory committee that Commissioner Rob sat on. Um, the meeting started with an introduction with Director Wesley and a statement that uh, both directors of wildlife and directors of the Department of Agriculture will be permanent ex officio members of the council, and I was pleased uh, to hear that. Um, there's been some concern expressed by multitude of folks that um, some of the setup and initial funding of the council and the technical team uh, was provided uh, disproportionately from the Department of Wildlife while some other uh, seats on the council hadn't necessarily provided funding and I was actually able to convey those concerns and read a, a letter into the record that was provided by Jim Jeffers to the council um, and I think everyone understands that and I kind of uh, threw out the fact that you know there's nine members of this council um, and, and several put it in skin in the beginning yet. We'd like to you know, look forward to trying to make sure that occurs and so we'll continue, or I will continue to work on that. Um, I think there was a misconception at one point that the Ecosystem Council had some sort of authority over the budgets and I just wanted to stress that we actually have absolutely no authority over the budgets um, and have not reviewed any of that, just to clear that up. Um, uh, the state is going to proceed with development of the USGS habitat model or the codes model that Tony mentioned. This is something that was developed in the bi-state population. Uh, federal agencies, including U.S. Fish and Wildlife, BLM, and Forest Service are all very high uh, on that model. And I think um, the reason they're so high on it is it can be replicated relatively quickly once it's uh, set up. Um, in their terms, it kind of develops a common currency for establishing a mitigation bank, um, and it's a little more and fine scale than the categorization that we have at this point. So I think those were kind of the advantages they saw in from the funding this state. So please correct me on that. Um, the funding for the development of the coach model will be funded uh, through question one funds, I believe, uh, which will be split through NDAL and DCNR's allocation on that. Uh, Leo Drozdov of DCNR basically stated at the meeting that at this point the state and all its departments are tapped for funding. So any funding to run the program from this point forward uh, really needs to come from new revenue sources, and I was glad to see that he made that statement on the record. Um, uh, some other key components that the technical team has been directed by the Ecosystem Council to work on. Um, the, the strategy that the advisory committee came up with uh, over the summer is really kind of a living, breathing document, and it's kind of been morphed also into a BLM uh, state alternative for analysis and a programmatic EIS. Um, Fish and Wildlife Service actually provided some questions and uh, pointed out some deficiencies in that strategy so the technical team uh, has been advised or has been directed to work on reviewing and providing kind of some recommendations for how we address those questions and deficiencies. The other major component is getting a mitigation program which is now being called the 461 a credit system up and running and the technical team was directed to work on developing a request for information uh, to solicit interest and concepts from groups who have essentially already established similar models in other places. A couple examples that were used is Wyoming already has kind of a mitigation or crediting system uh, in place in Wyoming, and then there's also uh, a system in place in Colorado called the Colorado Exchange. Um, we did get a brief update that the congressional delegation may be working on concepts uh, to help participate in kind of safe grouse protection and management going forward. Um, there, it sounds like at this point they're soliciting ideas that they may have um, direction to look at funding streams uh, that go into safe grouse conservation and potentially some sort of designation with those concepts are really up in there. It sounds like at this point, I think it sounds like they feel they, they need a role to play and they're kind of searching ideas and concepts as to how they might play in with uh, sage grouse conservation in general and dovetailing in with the state plan. Um, our next meetings, we do have a telephonic meeting on Monday at 3.30 uh, just to review the draft request for information that's going out. Uh, we have a regular meeting scheduled in Carson City for Friday, May 31st, a regular meeting scheduled for Monday, uh, June 17th, and a workshop um, scheduled for Monday, June 3rd. So uh, I would be more than willing to answer any questions again as the contact of that council if anyone on the commission
commission has, or public has questions of what we're doing or where we're trying to go. I'm uh, more than happy to answer those at any time. Feel free to hold me via email or phone. Just one question or one clarification on funding for the COATS model. Um, it's approximately eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars, four hundred and twenty-five of that coming from state lands Q1, and three hundred and seventy coming through the Ruby pipeline, and then about fifty-five uh, from from PR. Yeah, and players in the game and I and welcome those new players in the game because we've been spending this money for years and years and years and there's nothing we can do with wildfire with the bases with everything that's what state lands and, and the department of ag and bcnr that's their realm now that we're at the same table we can spend that money and now we've got cooperators with us and i think the money we spend in cooperation with them we can get a heck of a lot farther than we were on our own. So uh, I know there's some naysayers to this process. Uh, I am not one of those. I, I'm supporting this process and believe in it. And I think it's the best of the future for not just sagebrush, but the ecosystem of sagebrush and all the wildlife in the state. So uh, I fully support the direction this is going. Any other comments? We'll move on to 9C, Wildlife Damage Management Committee Report, Commissioner McBeth. Thank you, Chair Rob. Um, we uh, had a uh, three and a half hour meeting. Um, and I can tell you that the short uh, uh, conclusion uh, to the meeting was is that with both for with respect to policy 25 and with respect to the 2014 Federal Creation Management Plan, uh, we voted to uh, table both of those items uh, pending um, the completion of the legislature and specifically uh, uh, AB 345. Um, however, we did uh, obviously take the opportunity to uh, get into uh, both um, both the policy 25 and, um, and the draft plan. And, uh, and the department made it very clear uh, that these were um, definitely works in process and, uh, and they were intended to uh, start, start the discussion. Um, the, the policy is uh, going to require Policy 25, uh, you know, one of the first things we talked about was said, uh, uh, the policy actually comes up with the information management, which uh, sounds pretty good. So we, we did be looking at that change in the committee. Oh, and, and let me, uh, before I actually go, I, I also wanted to acknowledge that we had uh, two additional members of the committee uh, that joined uh, in this meeting. Um, uh, Commissioner Lane uh, was appointed by uh, uh, Chairman Rob, and uh, as was Chad. So they joined Commissioner uh, 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 Morai and, uh, and myself and Tom Castell and all that kind of So uh, I think we got a real good group. Um, um, so in addition, we, we discussed uh, uh, one thing that was brought in uh, the first time I heard was some uh, non lethal uh, methods for credit control, which would be interesting. I think we need to get some more information on that and understand that. Um, uh, 
Commissioner uh, Morai uh, has some concerns with regard to um, some of the language and policy 25 that kind of relates to wildlife services and their involvement. And so I think that we'll be addressing that in the, um, in the policy. Um, with regard to the plan, uh, we, we did go through each project and uh, we took the opportunity to give comments to the uh, I guess what I'd like to do is offer uh, the other members of, uh, of the uh, committee any additional comments. Uh, if they want to know anything else in the detail um, with respect to uh, what we discussed with the committee. I think one of the things that I got from the discussion at the committee meeting is that, that we were suggesting for uh, more involvement for wildlife services in the development and planning phases of uh, the projects and also uh, to the department that we were hopeful to be seeing uh, more projects available for us to review and there seemed to be a, a, a trend that possibly more people could buy into that we could incorporate uh, predation control projects with the habitat projects to maybe achieve a higher success rate on, on uh, the projects that we did approve. So that's that's about all I can add. Uh, Mr. Yeah, I, you know we uh, you know, with regard to the uh, projects, uh, we uh, there was some discussion of you know, uh, maybe having a more formal process uh, for uh, approving projects, uh, maybe even as uh, along the lines of what we used to do. Uh, so that was one of the things that was, uh, was kind of thrown out. Uh, again, uh, it was just a discussion uh, that uh, uh, went to uh, you know, actually work on the policy. My, my, my preference would be to have uh, uh, projects coming from multiple sources rather than just in and out and that the county planning committee to work with uh, other, other groups or other groups or other projects. And, uh, so uh, you know, those would be some of the things and, uh, and, uh, and the, uh, the discussion there, quite a bit of discussion on uh, integrating discussion. Uh, it's a good idea to came out. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll be getting into it now. Uh, and I do want to recognize that our dad uh, pointed out that there was uh, uh, one reference error in, uh, in the statute, statutory uh, citation, and so we'll uh, also address that. I didn't forget it. Okay, any other comments? Commissioner Ring. All right, I'm going to start with, uh, <coughs> I'll bring back some of the correspondence that we've had on uh, this the issue with the predation management plan as well as the policy.
Odyssey, and I'll try to mostly use some of the things that have come out in print and some emails I've had from several people. But I said, my little prison, my little call it a talk of presentation be basically two parts. I'll give you some good criticism, and some people aren't going to like it. But we have, have it the, and we're going to end it up with the solutions and how it should be done so we can fix these critics resolve these issues in a positive manner. And, you know, a lot of the emails, rather than trying to read all, all of them, one of them was interesting, uh, kind of maybe it summed them up in a brief paragraph of several of them. That was from a uh, Jana Wright from, I guess most of them are part of the county, he's one of the government office or something. Uh, doesn't quite say here, but it's kind of some government address. Commissioners, please do not waste any more money on the projects that do not show results for the next fiscal year. I started to read the draft of FY 2014 and could get as far as I was disgusted with what was being proposed. Please put an end to this nonsense. Thank you for your service, Jim. And, you know, there was several others who were kind of along that line, guidelines. There was one uh, gentleman that had written an article that came out in several different publications actually sent me a bunch of copies of it. I got one of was also probably the Fulton's Consent Commission that probably had at least a dozen or so public hand them down. Director, well, just kind of go over this. This one came out in uh, several different uh, publications, including the Alpha Daily Free Press, and Matter Rancher, and those are the list of you. We'll read the whole thing, but it surmises kind of what happened at our last meeting and and the way things have been going. And it's entitled Insanity at the Wildlife Meeting. I think it's actually quite accurate. And I don't see any inaccuracies in it. Um, I'll read a few excerpts from it as and you know, correspondence we received from this and they say this has been widely distributed. Wildlife Damage Management Committee was chaired by Mike McBeth, turned from Las Vegas, and this was the first Wildlife Damage Management Committee main part of wildlife had for almost two years under the best chairmanship. Many leads away for three dollar money. Mr. McBeth began the meeting by going into a 15 minute dissertation on how he explains any predator control. His expert opinion predator control for protection of wildlife doesn't work, costs too much, too controversial. Also, a television program that was against predator control. And you know, some people are fairly. Uh, an extra premise, you know, a little bit critical, but you know, one's got to listen to the critics from time to time. I'm sure Mr. McBeth is an educated man, sure he can spell predator, but I'm also sure this would be the extent of knowledge on the subject TV show site, of course. Um, next committee suggestion, Mr. McBeth spells an hour discussing the subject of changing the committee's name. After considerable discussion, the name remained unchanged. Finally, fourth revised the fourth version of the revised predator management plan from Mendow was presented, like discussion took place, um, including the opposition of parts of the plan by several parties, including current legislators, Assemblyman John Ellison, Ira Hansen, past Assemblyman John Carpenter. Chairman McBeth did not give a report from the Battle of Wildlife Commissioners on the Wildlife Damage Management Committee proceedings and their decisions to approve the three sage grouse projects and no decisions on the other projects. Instead, when the same rhetoric in the committee is how predator control not work, how wildlife populations, all the projects then had to be explained to the commission, but the legislators and other interested parties were not in attendance, thinking it to fulfill their objective of stopping the study by Pat Jackson. Why do we even have a committee meeting and take the time with legislators and other interested parties and then ignore everything that took, that took place? Um, goes on several more paragraphs on specifics on the uh, projects. Um, we go to approving ongoing study of coyote ecology and the monitor of Toyabi Tekima Ranges Central Nevada with Pat Jackson, graduate student at Utah State University, to $100,000 a year for five years. Previous three years ongoing studies, out of state students successfully caught and reacquired five coyotes, two have been shot, three remain active cost $193,463 the past three years, or $38,692.60 per coyote. It goes on to explain many many things in here, but also has some significant criticism in here of the uh, sage-grouse uh, plans that happened. A little 
little bit here when it gets to talking about uh, other endowed people. And this, if I say, went up to many thousands of people, probably well into the more than 10,000 between all different publications. Um, so it gets better. Sean Espinosa, is a former game warden, who's promoted law enforcement, sage grouse expert for endow, and his main biologist stopped the China Wind Mountain, Mountain Wind Project, closed over a million acres of gas and oil exploration leases, working hand to hand with BLMs, towards numerous cuts in AUMs, grazing allotments throughout Nevada, and assumption that could grazing could hurt a bird. That isn't even less than a major species list. One particular allotment, South Rico was cut, Snowball Ranch cut in half, AUMs, uh, without evidence of single sage grouse present, and out defense action in this area is a good sage grouse habitat and someday sage grouse might move the air, into the area. And, well, Mr. Misposa was awarded in Worded Endow's agency, Endow Agency's Way of the Year Award. Very important to point out, U.S. Forest Service BLM have long been thought as major threats to our way of life in Elkin County, but in our eyes, Endow, its own state agency, is working behind the scenes with U.S. Forest Service BLM as a bigger threat to sage grouse than fires and ravens, not to mention the war on mining and commission and our current commission are the, are the enemy. I simply believe the list of these two days. Thank you very much for your time, Pat Laughlin, President Eddie Ford Ovin. Some legitimate criticism there, so people might not might take it that way, some people might not. Now, well, okay, that's nice. Uh, I get all these emails from different people criticizing, and him and others criticizing. So what should we do? Okay, what's your bright idea, Rain? You know, we need to do it in a specific fashion. Endow should not design the individual plans as is happening. Endow's role should be to identify the problems. This is the information item we're getting into the deliberation on how we're going forward. This is discussion of what, how it should go forward. This, the committee, is going forward completely wrong in its methodology. At the last meeting, Scott, there, it's an informational item today. And if you have these comments, you could have showed up yesterday at the committee meeting, and I didn't see you there. That's the proper place to bring these forward. This is I, the I gave place. you time to, to uh, bring up your public comments and, and read them into the record. And uh, it says opinion on the top of the page that I have. It doesn't say fact. Uh, if you have any more public comment you want to bring up, but I'm not going to go down the road of deliberation on where we're going. That's what we have to On this agenda for. item today, as we are talking about, let me read the thing. The report on the draft predator management plan. Now we're talking about the plan. The problems with it and the what is the way it has been drafted. But it's, it's an information item. And it's this is information like and it needs to be brought out before the next draft. This needs to be brought up before the next draft. This is the informational item we are today, and this is okay. the information the committee should have been reporting. Hey Scott, give me two seconds. All right. What is our day think? Are we to the point of deliberation, or are we still informational at this point? I think you're beyond Thank you. So we're going to. So if I can ask a question, Dan. Now, the, under this information, under this item, Wildlife Damage Management Committee report. And that's the report. And the so, and I would like to report on some things about an opinion on how it should go about in the next in the next meetings. Where would, isn't this the appropriate time for that? Where would be the appropriate time for that? It's not here. I would concur with the chair. All right, and I'll state for the record that in the past, when we've had those committee meetings, things never get transmitted, so what's the point? You do it in a committee meeting, and the information doesn't get transmitted. Everything that those assemblymen said never got transmitted to the commission. That's been history, so what's the point? Thank you. Okay, and I'll bring this back to me as a public comment or something. Thanks. Okay. The point is, we do have a committee set up. Uh, I'm sure you have Commissioner Morris, phone well, number you have. You know, you can walk down the street, see Chad Bliss, they are on that committee. If you have concerns, take those concerns to your committee, and that's how we deal with these issues. Make sure you're... Yeah, you know, just for the record, um, ironically, I wasn't able to make the committee meeting because I was in Carson City testifying on AB 345, so uh, in a complete twist of irony, I did have...
have some notes um, after reviewing the plan and the policy uh, that I'll convey to the committee and the staff uh, to take a look at and consider in their next meeting. Thank you. Anything else from uh, the committee, Mr. McMath? Um, the only other thing I want to mention is, is that we uh, we're going to schedule another uh, meeting in advance, and uh, we're going to assume that we can find it out there. And then we can uh, uh, we'll have a marching order. and had some lists and then we could manipulate it back and forth on um, what funds were available and how much was left as we were going through the lists. And we had several, several of them that came up and actually had received more funding. So we were able to, uh, their request was actually able to pay down significantly to the funding that they had received. And we did as good a job as we could to actually fund the best we could every project. Um, some of them weren't to the full amount that they were looking for, but uh, the ones that were here and we could actually speak to, we tried to fund them to the amount that would not uh, eliminate their project and they could move forward. There were several projects, uh, the water development projects that weren't funded at their full amount and were actually still looking into trying to uh, some funding that can be redistributed to some of the other projects as well without uh, ending those projects. So uh, in, uh, that, that's, the, that's the majority of what we did yesterday, and I'll leave it to the other committee members if they have anything to add to that. I, I don't have anything to add. Uh, you'll see our report. I, I think it went very well. Projects that were funded are more than deserving and are going to benefit states wildlife. So, any other comments, Commissioner Drew? Yeah, the only statement I'd make is I've um, been reviewing some of the projects in detail and at least the list. It looked like there were some pretty impressive projects from a lot of different sources. So, I guess I'd just compliment the people who submitted projects. I know it's probably made the committee's life harder, but it's good to see um, a lot of really good projects being submitted. So, I appreciate it. The one thing that I will say was different this time than we used to see years ago, but I think everybody got the message, if you want your project to go forward, find matching funds, and uh, boy, we, you know, if, the, if you add up the matching funds and the funds we funded, there's millions of dollars hitting the ground doing 
good things for wildlife, and, and that's the way we should tackle these changes in cooperation with others and maximize these dollars. And I think the, the proposers of the projects did a fantastic job of doing that. Any other comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda number 9B, the Tag Allocation Hunt Application Committee. We met last night here at 6 o'clock. Uh, as we found in the first Tag Allocation Committee, uh, you gather a bunch of information and you have to go weed through it uh, before you even start going down the road. And uh, last night we went through and ranked. Uh, the suggestions brought forward into rankings one, two, and three. One being that yeah, has merit, we need to look at it. Two means it's not of type priority, and three means it's probably not going to hit the radar for the TAC to, to discuss any further. Uh, the ranking process took the majority of the evening, uh, but we did get through it, and uh, now we have a roadmap of what we need to look at in, in our priorities. Uh, the other thing we discussed shortly was the uh, upcoming uh, survey that we're going to try to incorporate sometime in the draw process. Uh, further discussions are going to need to be had on when we do the survey. Do we do it during the application process when you have the uh, post-draw op optimism or do you do a survey after the tags come out and you have the post-draw blues? Uh, when are we going to get our best answers? And uh, how do we formulate the questions to make sure that they're not leading questions that we get an honest answer uh, or an accurate answer. Uh, so that being said, is there anything else any other committee member would like to add? Seeing none, we're going to move on to uh, 9F. Uh, Mr. Sefton.